Hey guys, on today's show, I'm going to talk about monsters and the things that destroy them on Kickstarter now. Uh, there's a new game by our friends at Phalanx Games coming out on uh, GameFound. I'm going to talk about a Moncala themed or inspired game on Kickstarter called Ostia. A RuneScape board game 21 years in the making. <laughs> what? And BoardGameTables.com's bags are back on Kickstarter right now. They are amazing. We'll check them out. Hey guys, I'm Tim. I'm Bob. I'm Spencer. I'm Dan. <laughs> oh, okay. And this is the Board Game Rundown. Today, we're going to talk about games we played, some news, uh, and crowdfunding. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the new format. That is the new format. <laughs> Tim remembered. <laughs> but first, Bob, what is important? Like and subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so you get all the notifications when we have the new videos come out. Because you never know. Yeah, oh. and because we talk about Kickstarter sometimes, you know. That are done in like the next day yeah so, so you know, <laughs> get alerted immediately that's right sure sure mm. sure sure all right guys so what are some games we have played i'm gonna played jump in really quick because the i've only played one game without you guys okay oh, and right. it's not a board game it was D D again i'm just mentioning uh we did D <laughs> again last week it was fun session blah 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 yeah, we got a, a mini he's excited we're basically on a fetch quest and you know we're we're doing all that right now we fought a giant snake so that's cool but uh but, have fun looking for your MacGuffin. <laughs> yeah but, but uh that's all all I have played without you guys, so I just wanted to mention. Sure, All right. sure. I Spencer, played. you say he said he's got a lot. Oh yeah, I want to see if he can compete well, with you this yeah, week. Right, Probably not, but it's been two <laughs> weeks, so it watch his confidence. And a bunch tripled. of them I played with you guys. Okay. Uh, all right, so we, we have played. Uh, I've started to teach my daughter how to play some classic games because she's been asking about them. So we played Scrabble twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why not? Good. Mastermind. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that child. We played it like five times in a row, and then she's like, "No, can we keep going?" I'm like, "It's." Past your bedtime, John. <laughs> <laughs> it was noon. It was Spencer was just done. Yeah, no, we're done. <laughs> uh, After she beat him five times in a row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was teaching her how to play chess. Nice. Um, not just like the pieces move this way, but like you want to try to take over this part of the board. Um, you know, like strategy. Actual chess not strategy. Not just like these you mean, are like other pieces. Loser move. chess. Loser chess. Normal yeah. people play chess by going, I don't know, I'll move that piece here. Oh, you got me. That's how most people play chess. <laughs> just That's why you always lose. <laughs> <laughs> I call it loser chess. Um, and I played <laughs> New <laughs> Frontiers. Um, that The game that I got on Christmas, uh, mm -hmm. it's the Race of the Galaxy board game, um, and I played that at our uh, Meeple, Meeple Meetup. Meet uh, nice. It was pretty fun. And we played it before that, but I think we already talked about that. Yes, yeah, so we did play it before that. We yeah. talked about that. Um, but yeah, uh, good game. Good game. You I like it better than race. I do. I did not love race, but it was mainly because it was just so overwhelming, especially playing against people who knew what they were doing. You just feel like you don't have a chance. And I just, I felt like Alien Frontiers, that's what it's called, right? Uh, New Frontiers. New Frontiers. Uh, Alien Frontiers is a different game. Uh, New Frontiers has that same feeling, but I felt like it is much easier for new players to stand a chance. I don't know why. Um, yeah, and I'm sure if you played Race for the Galaxy more times, that would go away. Sure, but, sure, but, but what I'm saying is players. I played New Frontiers <laughs> once. Yeah. Yeah. And, yep. and and I had that feeling. So uh I know I played a bunch with you know you guys. Sure. Well you, what do you got without us? Uh without you guys, so uh got to play into the Echo side a few more nice. times. So I think that's oh, a yeah. great deck building. How game. is that not a new to you like on your new to you list when we did those? Uh because I think I got delivered and I technically didn't start playing my copy until but you played Jason's copy. Why would that have I did, because that was the... Uh... He forgot every game he played there, though. Yeah, that's he, true. he didn't he put did. any game that we played there that's on true. his list. true. <laughs> and I think, and <laughs> I think I some should have been. Arcana I did, didn't I? Oh, yeah. Shipper Arcana that the first time you played that? Well, yeah. that's yeah. even worse than, than you forget about the other games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that... Uh, I How'd it go over, though, with the other people? Uh, oh, the, IC, the ICP one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was great. Oh, like, were you at a gathering? Over... over. No, I was not at the gathering, but no. Um... They wanted to play it again, and we did. Oh, and sure. And then uh, they came over a couple days later, and he wanted to play it again. Nice. And yeah, so we pl I've played it probably four or five times the past couple weeks. Nice. It is, yeah. it is a great game. As one of the better deck builders. I don't like DC deck builder, and mm -hmm. I, I don't like a lot of games that are like it. And for some reason, I played it in the Echo Side, and I was like, this, this And it plays yeah, exactly the same. It's basically, the same. yeah. The, slight the, the faction element is slightly different. And yeah. for some reason, I really like that, and that yeah. might have lifted up a bit. But I don't know. I just, I really yeah, like no, it. No, it's think, fine. There's, there's definitely. Parallels, yeah. like game parallels, where it's like, nah, I always sure. want this one. One of the I things totally I enjoy it. about it is that 
the there's no real attacks, right? I'm like, oh, here's my hand. By the time it comes to my turn, I'm like, okay, I've got like one or two cards left. Yep, my turn sucks. Oh, sure. That's one of my worst things I don't like about DC. Mm-hmm. But in this one, there's not really much of any of that at all. And sure. so by the time when you draw your cards and you look at them, you're pretty much going to have those cards when it comes back around, even if somebody takes one of the bigger ones, like the epics, right? Because mm-hmm. they're not like, oh, here comes another new, you know, mm-hmm. so crazy less, villain who's going to take, take away that. all your cards. Correct. Right. Yeah, more just kind of like building your deck, and there's a lot more ways to thin your deck out, mm-hmm. which I enjoy as well. Okay. Because, yeah, for one time we were playing, I think I had, like, six cards in my deck. So I was, like, drawing my whole deck like, every time. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I See, I like it when I can do that in D.C. Yeah, that's a lot oh, more difficult to do. Yeah, but yeah. when you do it, oh, it feels it's so, so good. good. Okay. Uh, after that, we played Civilization, A New Dawn, which is one of the newer Civilization games. It plays with hexes instead of squares, which I enjoy hexes a lot more. And there's a lot less combat in that one, too. Like, when you play, like, the earlier civilizations, there's a lot more, like... I mean, yeah, there's, like, military and stuff, but, like, in the older ones, there's military, and you actually right. go, and you take over areas. Evil Gandhi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in the newer one, there's a lot less of that. You can take over territories and whatnot, but it's, it's way more difficult to, like, you know, invade other people's t- uh, terrain. Uh, but it's got a really cool thing where it's got, like, uh, you have a little timetable of one through five, and you have your five basic actions that you can take. And as you take an action, you'll slide that card down and everything else moves up and that card will slide to the back. And so like as the cards progress down the line, it's like your civilization's focusing on those more so that the ability becomes stronger, right? So the further down the line it is, the stronger that ability is. So if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, it's not only like a tier one or two, it's not going to be very strong. Mm-hmm. But if you let it go until tier five, it'll be a stronger proc, basically. Nice. So that's a pretty cool little uh, neat thing. It kind of makes me think of like Zulkin, right? Like when you pull your worker off the wheel. Like so the longer you let that worker Reset, ride the wheel, the like the, he gets done. the better you get, yeah. right? The better thing you yeah. get. Something similar to that. Uh, then we had our Meeple meetup, and we did play a bunch of games together. Some of the ones yep. that you guys did not play. Um, I taught Beyond the Sun, which is like Tech Tree the game. I know Dan's sad because he had to miss out on it, yeah, but it was amazing. I want to play it too. And I tell you what, Dan, I played it again this week too, so I got to play it twice in a week. So <laughs> yeah, that's pretty brag nice. about it. I, so I tried to, like to, to invite him too, but he didn't want to wake up to stay up late. So yeah, there was no way it yeah. wasn't going to. work. By stay up night. late, you mean like one a.m. to it? One, two in the morning. Yeah, right. But that's it was also start, the day right? that I had to be <laughs> up at eight a.m. <laughs> no, but I mean Friday, yeah. that's late. That's what I. It's oh, not sure, like all. Sure. Oh, well, you wanted to go oh, to bed yeah, at ten o'clock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> That's all. Uh, I was I so yeah, on your side. Uh, yeah, but I just don't like that. you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that. The truth Fair. comes out. Uh, another one I played is called Haikai. So this is one that uh, David taught me. It's a, a local person is making a roll and write game. Oh. Um, it's available. I'm not sure where he said it's available at because um, it's self published. Okay. So, so um, it, could it be like Game Crafter or maybe uh, Game Crafter or I think our, just our local FG, FLGS right now has okay. it. We um, will if we'll you can figure it out. It, the, it might be on the screen. Yeah, there or might something. be something right here if for you, you can to look at. Out. Not that? here. Yeah, not so much not here. Not here. Yeah, but here. This area. But uh, instead of, it's kind of it works a lot like um, Quicks does, right? So okay. you're using you have uh, different colored dice, but they're D12s, and you've got the one through twelve listed on like the five different colors, and you also have a wild one. And so when you roll all the dice, the black one's the wild one. Anybody can take that die, mm-hmm. and then um, the difference is is you can either work from one up to twelve or start at twelve and work backwards. Okay. And then plus once you close it out, that doesn't necessarily stop anybody else from marking it out too. Right so there's some, there's some subtle differences in there and whatnot, but it's uh, he named it after his uh, granddaughters. I think it's like Heidi and Katie or something like that. So it's like okay, Hi Kai. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so that was kind of cool. And then uh, I played a game that I think I played it once before, but it was a long time ago, um, and it was the first time with the expansion, Seven Wonders Duel. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I talked about that yeah. one last uh, I feel yeah, like I it is an improved version of Seven Wonders. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I liked it. And he had the uh, Agora expansion. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah okay. I, haven't, I haven't played with any Yeah, I've only played so. straight. And... Uh, he didn't see it coming, but I military victory him pretty. Oh. It wasn't pretty quickly, but it, I thought it felt like it was pretty quick. We didn't even read the third. <laughs> How do you age not see that coming? Because I had uh, <laughs> There's a big had red a, marker sliding. I know, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I had a, I had a, a double uh, military wonder, and uh-huh. then I had um, something in my hand that let me do one, and then there was one out there. And as soon as he uncovered the one, I right. took it, and took then he it. couldn't stop my two in a row that I nice. did right. to do the other one. He's like. Oh man, I was like, so that that's a win win, right? Like, I, yeah. I win no more out. Like, yeah, that's it. We don't even add points. Nope. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's beating me in points. It's like hardcore engine building. Yeah. 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 Card, drafting. Card drafting. Card drafting. Card drafting engine mm-hmm. building little uh, game. Very fun. If you're looking for a 1v1 game, like a two player versus game, mm-hmm. I think it's one of the best. Yeah. I, it, was, it was great. I actually enjoyed it pretty, pretty much. Uh, okay, so games I played without you guys. I'm not done yet, but okay. Oh, you're not? No. Oh, go on. You it sound did like you were sound done. like you were passing yeah. the yeah. Well, that was, that was Okay, so uh, I was that's that for Meeple, but then I also had more games. Okay, go All for right. it. 
Uh, so we talked about this game a little bit ago of uh, introductory games. I busted it back out the other night. Defenders of the Realm. Yeah, yeah. classic. Yeah, classic uh, little co-op where you're all working together. Little, to that's these. a table hog, man. <laughs> sure, it's a big board. No, according to Bob, it's about this <laughs> that's big. That's how big. That's, well, no, Monarch City, because you start in Monarch City, and you're defending Monarch City from these generals that are coming in. And Yeah, now this is much more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, that was a ton of fun. We played that. It is a pandemic killer for me. Yeah, it is so much better than Pandemic. Because um, you got asymmetrical abilities. And, I mean, you guys get to do that in Pandemic as well. Yeah. But these are cool. The theme is really cool, too. It is. Yeah, fantasy based. Um, I got a stack of characters. And the minis are cool and minis everything. Cool. Yeah, yeah, there's just a lot of good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I taught uh, Genotype. Nice. Uh, so I've not played. One. Yep, that's a, that's a fun one. It's got some um, worker placement and some dice drafting, and you're trying to uh, break down all the. Uh, genes, components of different uh, mm-hmm. green beans and peas and stuff. Peas. Mm, terrible. I know. Sounds stupid. Uh, <laughs> I got to teach Five Minute Mystery uh, okay. to oh, some yeah. kids. Right and uh, they had a blast. I think it was uh, 8 and 13 or 14. Oh, okay. And they, I, I set them to the task of finding all the bits and turning the codex. Because like oh, there's sure. always crime scenes with these different icons hidden. And they have to look for the icons and then set this codex. When they think they have it right, they flip the card over. They see if they're right. If they're right, we get a clue. And then using those clues, we have to figure out who the who stole the MacGuffin. Right. So yeah. you were just in control I, the cards. Yeah, I was I was controlling the suspects and whatnot, and I was letting them looking for clues right. and find them. And then let me know when you got a clue. Okay, what, what kind of clue do you want? And let I let them pick what kind of clue. Hurry up! Hurry up! <laughs> Here, no. Give me the codex, <laughs> uh, idiots. Yeah, and then we played Defenders of the Realm again. Oh, uh, yeah. last night. So, yeah. it was such a big yeah. game. And I didn't have some now. games that we played together that I'll, but I'll let them go ahead and jump. Sure, sure, sure. So games I played without you guys. Sure. Um, I played, it's coming out from Grand Gamers Guild really soon. It's mm. like uh, the late, the newest in their holiday hijinks, like yes. little tiny deck, you know, mystery, uh, the Cupid Crisis. And uh, played with, I actually played with uh, two other people that I've never played any games like that before. Actually, Paul, who is like relatively like, New, new to the deep hobby you know okay. deeper side of sure, the hobby sure. and stuff but he's game right right um and then eric was a new guy that we met and, and we we're playing a bunch of games with and he wanted to try it out and i was like yeah let's do it right and uh we scored pretty well it's really good mm-hmm. um i'm really impressed with these versus like some of the other like small box oh sure um, escape rooms yeah so i think in those sometimes in the small box small box escape room games you can find some Clue or puzzles in there. They were like, mm, "That's a stretch." Or yeah. you know, oh, yeah, sure, sure. Where it's song. like, oh, I could, I could have gotten a different answer for that. Right, like, it would still make Never sense. Like that it kind of right, and you know that happens sometimes. It is what it is. I have accepted that as part of the you know play thing. Right, I have yet to have that happen with any of, of these, these holiday hijinks ones. There, mm-hmm. the the uh, the uh, website that you use. And it gives you like all your information, mm-hmm. you know, and like a lot of it is just arbitrary information, right? Like oh, red yeah. herrings, a lot of red oh, herrings yeah. in there. But then there's some really good puzzles. And I think everybody at a different point in time, uh, and I think three might be the sweet spot for it, right? For like player count. Mm-hmm. You could play with as many people as you want. But like uh, two or three, I think would really. Otherwise you get some bored people. Yeah. But I mean, I think we all like were able to kind of go, aha, you know, and, and, and solve some stuff like really quickly. And, um, because there was some where it's like, you're trying to figure out like a word and, uh, you're coming up with these letters and I just spouted out the thing and they're like, well, how do you know? And it's like, well, the first three letters, you know, there's only like four more letters and th- it's a theme, you know, like, sure. It's Hard probably this, probably this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, pop, pop, pop. Oh yeah. Good. You know, but I'm, I like games like that. Right. And I, uh, but everybody, it was nice. Cause I think everybody got to participate a lot and, and do a lot of stuff with it. I also played uh, treasure Island. Uh huh. Yeah. And man, we had a crazy game of it, like really crazy. Because literally, on uh, Paul again, the guy who doesn't play a ton of games, mm-hmm. his first move, he ended his first move standing exactly where the treasure was, and I was like, if he searches, he wins. He, he wins. wins. Yeah. On his first, on his second <laughs> turn. Move. Yeah. Second turn. A classic <laughs> Tim move in a board game of losing. But on the this first time, turn. <laughs> but this time. He then moved again and then searched. Uh, and uh, David, who ended up finding it on the last turn before I could start to go for it, and it would have taken me two turns to get there, he only found it because he had the asymmetric power to search on the outside, outside of the, the ring. Girl. So, yeah. like, he barely, 
he barely got it. But in Treasure Island, uh, basically, I was playing uh, uh, Blackbeard. Right? No, Long John Silver. Yeah, I know. You I was, getting, you I was say Black Blackbeard. Same thing. Same I was playing thing. Long John Silver, and I buried treasure somewhere on the uh, on this island. And everybody else is running around trying to find where it is, and I have to give them clues. And some of the clues can be lies. <laughs> and there was one clue that was really, really good, and, and like actually kind of gave it away because it was like in proximity to this. Uh-huh. But I put my bluff token down on it. And I knew they were going to take a chance to like look at it. So in a bluff token, you can either be telling the truth or lying. Right. And so I was like, oh, please think I'm lying. Please think I'm <laughs> lying. And it, it, it came really close. It was really fun. Everybody, was, there was a lot of like, and, yeah. yeah, and everybody had a really good time. It was everybody but myself's first time playing it. Sure. Um, so it was, a, it was a really good game. It plays really fast mm-hmm. still like teaching it, even when you don't lose on the second yeah, turn. Yeah. That yeah. would play really fast. Um, yeah, yeah really it could fast. play real quick, yeah. but yeah, no, it was a lot of fun and we had a lot of success with that. Did you, so, um, games we all played together. Yes. Blank Slate. Blank, Blank Slate. Blank Slate. It was my yeah. first time. Yep. Uh, playing oh yeah. Blank What'd Slate? you think of Blank Slate? I mean, I don't like it as much as just one after just that one play, but I mean, it's great. There's, I absolutely love it. I have it. no negatives. For yeah, it. yeah. If yeah. I had the two on the table, I would grab just one. Sure. But if just one then got a bunch of drinks spilled on it and then caught on fire randomly, I would be like, okay, well, we're playing Blank Slate. And we'll still have a fun time. Right. Even if there was still another pile of games that weren't Blank Slate or uh, just one, like, you make I, it sound like I would only, only play, play Blank if, Slate if, if somebody was on fire. Yeah, spontaneously combusted. <laughs> no, I'm saying like it's in that like party genre of like warm up games for the night for yeah. me. It's not like a game yeah. I would just I just oh, want to play it first. Right. <laughs> um and like so I would compare that to just one, which sure. is my and party it was a game. great sort of uh, introductory game for everybody because we had yeah. a bunch of people that we yeah. have not played with before, you yeah. know, kind of show up to a meetup mm-hmm. and um, you know, like like we all kind of knew somebody. Well, and Eric didn't know anybody, which right. was awesome because he sat down and fit in right away. Which is why I love playing games and just meeting people. Yep. Um, but you know, like I knew Paul. I think you've met Paul before. Uh, maybe not. Me, I don't recall. You've met Paul before. We might have yes. played Cthulhu Wars with Paul at Pete's one oh, time. Okay, that's in a big game. Yes. Uh, but anyway, yeah, and you've met I'd Paul met before. Paul, yeah. So I mean, like, but he doesn't know anybody really well, you sure. know, or anything. Uh, but anyway, so it was a really good time. So blank slate was perfect. Everybody was then kind of warmed up and ready to go. It's like pick from this. We're all like pick from this stack of games, and we all kind of went and played. Yep. It's it's basically word association. There's gonna be a card with a word on it, like um, you know, house, and everyone writes down a word that they would associate with the word house. It could yeah. be something that actually finishes like a outhouse, or it could just be house home. No, 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 the, no, blank, yeah. no. the blank is either on the, the front or the back of the word. Yeah, so we'll say house blank. Well, sure. Yeah, house right. Guest. But if it was blank house, I guess then, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah then it's either like full house or right. yeah, our house. Or right. You write anything you want. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's just pure word association at that point. Um, as long as it sure makes. Yeah, I don't know. As long as somebody else associates it also. Right. right. You want <laughs> to match with someone, but you don't want to <laughs> match. You don't want to match with no one. Right. And also you get less points if you match with more than one person. Yeah, right. you get you get extra points if you only so pair you up. Mind meld with one person. Right. Oh, yeah, that was a crazy game. We had so many people get three points. Yeah, well, then the new guy. Oh, they're the new oh, guy. He, he, he was time. pairing with he was, everybody. He was one guy the every time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was really good. It was good. Uh, oh, games I played without you guys. Uh, so my sister came over. We played a whole bunch of Crokinole. Okay. Like she'd mm-hmm. never played. And I was like, eh, you might like this. And my nephew, I, I thought my nephew might like it. Mm-hmm. And uh, my nephew and I started playing it and I was teaching him. And we were playing for probably a half an hour, like back and forth, just, you know, new game, new game, new game. And then my sister came over and I was like, what are you guys doing? So then she started playing and we were playing like a three player game. Mm-hmm. And uh, she started to get real competitive with it, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Crokinole went over like gangbusters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, just yesterday I was at my sister's house and I took Lords of Vegas over cause I got my poker chips for Lords of Vegas cause mm-hmm. I just yeah. ordered the poker, the, those Pantabits. chips specifically. Yeah. And, um, oh, she was into it. Nice. Like, like competitive and her boyfriend who is, as far as I know, has only ever played party games. Right. Sure. And he's playing it. And, um, by the, he was getting into it because it was like. You know, we're taking over casinos, you're reorganizing, you know, and there's like all that strategy and planning mm-hmm. of all of that. Now, he and I came in dead last because we kept messing with each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Kelly and my sister, both my wife and my sister, both were just like building these gigantic casinos and like playing very smart. Have you played the one with the top? No, leaves? I haven't tried okay. up yet. I have it, but I haven't tried it so, yet. 
I'm confused because you keep using words like smart and strategy oh, and so competitive. Good. There's so much strategy. But then you, in the same conversation, you're talking about Lords of Vegas. So I'm just I'm confused. It's just because you don't like good games doesn't mean <laughs> that's where the confusion comes in. Yeah, 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 that's where it, that's where it comes in. But anyways, uh, I always come all the way to the station. There. Always happy when like you bring a game that you love, right? Like Lords of Vegas. We love mm-hmm. Lords of Vegas. You bring it to the table and everybody, you know, and then everybody, everybody with it. a brain like thinks it's a really yeah. good game. Yeah, yeah. So definitely. Have you played it yet, Spencer? I haven't played it yet. Okay, cool. So, so there's still I, hope I for you. There's still hope for you yet. You're yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we play like a bunch of euchre. Like yeah. my uh, sister's boyfriend, you know, likes euchre, blah, oh, blah, yeah. blah. And it's like, well, that's a fair trade-off. Sure. Like I'm happy to play. You play Lords of Vegas with me. Let's play a bunch of euchre. Yeah. So it worked out pretty good. Uh, while you guys were playing Treasure Island, Bob and I taught uh, two new people, three new people. Three. Three new people. Rah. <sighs> Rah, 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 rah. Uh, so we've, we've talked about Ra a lot lately. Yeah. We also reviewed it recently. Um, and Ra is a... Uh, 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 Three, five. It was so difficult when we tried to say... Because it was like, okay, so set there's collection. like set collection, but yeah, it's like bidding. push your luck, yep. but it's like bidding. Yep. <laughs> like we were trying to describe yeah. the game. <laughs> it's pretty much just it's like all those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a really fun push your luck bidding game, and yeah, the scoring works with some kind of set collection. But overall, I mean, whatever. It, every you know, there's going to be some kind of genre to the scoring <laughs> for yeah, every game. Plenty of luck, but um, as well. oh, I mean, of course, yeah, there, what, you, what gets pulled out of the bag, it's right? Like, you, like, there's definitely a tiny bit of strategy on when you bid, bid and stuff, invoke. but but most of it is obvious. Like, it's not like it's a tough decision. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, clearly, I think I should bid. Like, you could again push your luck and try mm-hmm. to bid next time and see what happens. Blah blah. But you kind of know when the bidding needs to start happening, depending on how well you're doing. Like, if you're doing really well. No bidding. No starting to bid. <laughs> yeah. Let, 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 let it build it up. as big as it can. <laughs> um, but yeah, just a fantastic game. It's got some really great mechanics. It is a truly evergreen And Jason, game. yes, you need to play it. You are correct. Yep. Oh, yeah, he did say you need uh, to yeah. play that. One other game that we played without them? Shipwreck Arcana. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah that was the same Arcana. day. Yes. That game plays so fast, I forgot. It, yeah. <laughs> it's but I ever had a great time with oh, that, too. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love that We taught a couple people how to play that because it plays up yeah. five. Yep. I think it might have been the same group of people. Yeah, same group of people. Yeah. Got a review for that. Yep. Yeah. But, yeah, check that out. Uh, you're using these tarot cards, and you've got these um, black t- these tiles that you pull out of the bag. You pull two of them, and one you're going to keep secret, and the other tile you're going to lay down. To They're number one to, through seven. One through seven. You're going to lay the tile down uh, on one of the clues to try to get everybody else to try to guess what tile you kept mm-hmm. hidden. And the clues have a, they put the tile on there because the clues have a threshold so they can only hold yeah. so many tiles before then they, they fade, they fade and over. And become a negative if you don't make a correct guess. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. Yeah, Shipwreck yeah. Arcana is really good. Great great little deduction game. Co-op Cooperative deduction. Cooperative deduction. For like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, you're not going to have many of those in your collection. Pick this one up. Yeah. I, it's so good. So good. Yeah, and the production games, value is, Marimorph games. And the production short. value is really good. Yeah, it's really sharp doesn't looking, overstay man. its welcome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nope, nope. If uh, anything, it, it it keeps getting better yeah, like the longer you, you, play. you play it and you're like, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh two games we did play together, all all of all us mm-hmm. play yep. together. Uh we did play Monsters and the Things That Destroy Them. I will we talk did. about that more in depth coming up, but yep. I just want to mention it now. Mm-hmm. Um right. And then we also played a game that is coming out in a couple of weeks called Mountains Out of Mole Hills yeah. from mm-hmm. the that was fun. Mm-hmm. And uh you're these little moles. Digging around and it's a two, le- two level, tiered. yeah, two tiered yeah. board. And so you're moving around down here, pops moving up your mole yeah, up there, and, and very got cool. a couple more. Yeah, got more. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we talked about them last no, week, did we? We? Uh, we played Tammany Hall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just oh. checking. Oh yeah. my gosh, how did you forget that? How did I forget that? <laughs> I was so excited to talk about it. We didn't get to talk about it last time we filmed yeah. because we weren't filming this stuff. No, exactly. Oh my gosh, I Tammany. Just, Tammany, Tammany Hall. Hall. Oh, I forget who game. originally played it. Uh, Bob and I actually had the pleasure of playing it for the first time. We had it taught to us by Max Michael, who is one of the developers yep. of Tammany Hall. Um, and it was a great experience. I mean, we are cackling with how evil we are being. Because uh, in Tammany Hall, mm. you're basically in Boss Tweed's New York in like the 1860s. And you are manipulating ethnic groups uh, and immigrants as they are coming into town because you want them to vote for you. So you send your ward bosses there to gently suggest like which way suggest. they should vote. <laughs> and then uh, as you go through, then you go through all the regions and you're, 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 you know, you're voting, you, you're getting like favor tokens with the different groups like the Irish or the Italians, the English or the Germans, I believe are the main ones. Uh, there might be one I'm forgetting, but anyways, 
Um, so you, you can spend those favor tokens for votes. You know, there's, a, there's kind of other things you can do. And then whoever wins the most uh, thing uh, most territories yeah, becomes the mayor. Mm -hmm. And then the mayor is going to appoint the other jobs, yeah. right? And so like, there's the cops where you just remove an ethnic group. Uh, like, all, just pull it all, off the board. All this is bribable. Yeah, you can. Everything too. There's there's a uh, one job where they move an ethnic group from one one section to another. Section. One section to another. You just push a cube over. Uh, there's one where you can block, like just shut down a thing, yep, and like yep. no more pieces can be placed here, in or out. Uh, and then I forget what the other one does. There's one other one I believe. Nah. But anyways, it's a fantastic game. Under it got the radar, a, man. It's it got a reprint from Panasaurus just mm -hmm. like last year, and it still does not get the love. We are gonna do a review of it. I want to play it with these guys like one more time and I want Bob to kind of get a refresher because it's been a it's few been, years been a while. since since he's played it but it, for me it's just an excuse to play it again mm -hmm. um, but what a fun mean historically really? accurate uh, territory control game mm -hmm. we all joke and call it hate in a box and build yeah. it up it's really mean it is I mean. don't think it was as mean as you expected it to be no but it but yeah, well, sure. I wouldn't play it with a bunch of people that I knew only ever played games mean. That sounds terrible. Yeah. So, but but uh, I I won't speak for you guys, your experiences. But I had a really good time playing it again, and I felt like there was a bunch of moments where like things were coming down to the wire. You know, it's, it's like oh, oh no, you know, and we're moving stuff around and manipulating things and making deals and mm. uh, and things like that. And of course, again, like trigger warning, right? You are manipulating ethnic groups. You know, you're manipulating immigrants. Just give the trigger warning before you start talking. Yeah, about too late. Right. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying, no, if you have, post. if you have any problem with any part of that yeah. theme, that's fine. Don't, Don't play, play it. The game. Uh, it's historical. I mean, it is something that uh, that occurred, and I get some people will say, "Well, don't make a game about it." I get it. I disagree. I I fundamentally disagree with that. Yeah. Um, you're not perpetuating like hate or anything like that, and in, in playing a game like this. Again, it represents sort of a dark period, you know, in our country's history, but I find it very interesting. It use the artwork in the game uses political cartoons from the time period, which I thought was excellent and keeps it on theme and very thematic. Um, I mean, there's not anything like slanderous or slurs in there, right? But, right, exactly. But if you are uncomfortable going, I'm gonna push the Italians out of this ward, you know, I mean you might find that problematic. And I also, this may not be for you. I also will argue that while the theme is designed around the game to be very specific and everything, you can very easily play that game as just an area control game where you're pushing green cubes into a space and it changes nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you can reskin it, um, it very easily. If you needed to. But right. I, why? Why? The sure. theme works perfectly for what the game is. Yeah, it's almost Gangs of New York here. Right? Yeah, no, yeah, it's 100%. exactly that time period. <laughs> yeah. Exactly that time period. Yeah. So anyways, guys, what, have anything to say about Tammany Hall? Sorry. I, I had a good time with it. I don't honestly see what makes it better than any other cube-pushing area control game. Sure. Um, but I mean, it was fun. I had a good time with it. Uh, I want to try it again because I found um, it does the opposite of trying to of keep up mechanics. If you get behind... Um, you might just screwed yourself for the rest of the game. You might not. You might be able to get out of it. But uh, we had two players who uh, they couldn't get any of the tokens, so they couldn't bribe anyone, and we couldn't put things down and vote for them because we didn't have any tokens to do it, uh, and you ended up just... I See, that's on you for not negotiating. Not not just that, because I'm Better. also terrible at negotiating, and I don't play negotiation games very often. But <laughs> I, I'll say to that point, though, I, I think that in, in, in that game, it's it's the act that gets you behind that causes the problem. Like, if you don't get um, persuasion tokens, favor tokens, favor yeah, tokens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you don't get favor tokens, then you cannot win. So, oh, yeah. so uh, yes, that means that if you get behind and you can't get more favor tokens, you kind of can't catch up. But at the same time, if Bob's getting a bunch of white cubes and Tim's getting a bunch of green cubes, maybe go for blue cubes and try to get those persu those favor tokens and build it up. Because if, if you are tr constantly trying to fight other people and losing to them, then you are not going to win. But then I would argue you are playing poorly. You don't deserve to win. Oh, I completely right? abandoned Any the English... Cubes right, because Caleb was taking all of the white cubes. It, like it's a game where you right. kind of need to pick something early and focus. At least yeah. for my one play, that's oh, really well, what it felt like. I had been doing that. I, right. I was focusing on Italian, and then it got wiped out from under my feet. I think you might have done that. Um, and then I, I was focusing. Um, once green I the whole ran game. out, 
That's um, Irish. I could never get another foothold. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad game. No. I, sure, sure. That's why I want to try it again. Yeah. I, I, I guess I'm just saying that, again, it's just after one play. Yeah. But any game that you s- make a bad move at the beginning and then don't try to fix that move the whole game, you're going to lose. Like, no, no, no. any well, game What if like you that. are trying, but you don't have any way to do it? That's my point. Sure. I'm just saying that if you take any <laughs> game and you, and you just... Do that. So gonna, you're we're, have the we're same just outcome. we'll just quote uh, Katie and say play, play better. better. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I, I so to your point about like oh how is this like, different yeah. from other ones? This was one of the first ones. Sure, this, this is a much older game. Right. that then got reprinted. And of course that is just a you know an no. unfortunate thing I have over my I, head of playing it so late. No, it, uh, right, hundred percent. I, I, I accept. I do not take anything away from sure. your opinion because yes, it's like well you could play the Godfather. A Godfather right. play. Has some different mechanics, but is very similar, right? In some ways, and uh, with the territory control. So I mean, there's there's different things. Sure, I was thinking um, even like El Grande. Oh sure, yeah, has, yeah, a, yeah. has a has a very similar pure cube pushing area control feel mm-hmm. to it, you know. But I re- I love El Grande. Too. Sure, it's Man, good. I played it for the first time, you know, a couple months ago because that was like a huge gap mm-hmm. in my experience, and I was just like, this game's awesome. <laughs> like, I don't care how old this game is. Like, I really was. I was having a good time playing it. Um, but anyways, yeah. So we played Tammany Hall. I had a really good time with it. I was really happy. Uh, that we got to play it. What else did we play? We also played Tapestry. 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 Which was not your first time. It was no, Caleb's um, first time. I think no, Caleb had played no, it before. It Jesse's, Jesse's, first, Jesse's first, time. first time. Caleb had played once before, but not his own copy. Correct. That's what it yeah, was. Okay. Right. It was Correct. his first time playing his copy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah Tapestry. It is, it is a really underrated Stormfire. I mean, I, I'm pretty certain I got crushed, but man, that was fun. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of us did. I was lapped. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, a fantastic game. I mean, it's in my top ten. Uh, it's an yeah. engi- pure engine building. You know, people will say Civ building, but I mean, it's just a, a it's Civ engine themed builder. engine builder. Um, and yeah, from Stonemaier Games. Uh, fantastic, fantastic game. Second yeah, expansion comes out soon. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it was a come from behind victory. Now that I think about it, Caleb had just secretly been getting all these end game points, and we hadn't really noticed. And I had all these during game points, so I was ahead of everyone. All of a sudden, he just, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, and you get that can happen. Yeah, you, yeah. that can happen. That can That's happen. how the game works. There's, there was there was some really good twists and turns, and yeah, I felt like even though I got lapped by like 100 points at the end, I I felt like I played really well. I had yeah. a great time. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's definitely same. if you had a good time. I, I had a good time playing. Matters. Didn't matter. Yeah, yep. same. Same. Yep, tapestry. I'm at the really like I think, I think that's, that's it. it. I think that is it. That's <laughs> one a lot of game. hour later. I so, think well, that's I mean, it. but that's the thing Only with the new with the new format. There's more time for yeah, those games, but we're also dedicating more time to talk about those yep, games, right? right? Yep. So, it's two um, weeks worth of games. It's been yeah, Grande, exactly. Right here. <laughs> El Grande's over there. Yeah. Oh, yep. All right, stop the show. I'm gonna play. Uh, <laughs> I love El Grande. Uh, all right, so let's get into some news then, the right? All the, right. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is the big. The big. The big. Uh, so some news. Uh, okay. So there's a. Uh, I've seen this on our shelf at the uh, at our FLGS, and I was curious about it. So there's the Lord of the Rings living card game. Mm-hmm. Right. So recently had a tenth uh, anniversary. This is the tenth anniversary. Yep. yep. Uh, so the 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 version you are seeing on shelves now at your game stores uh, is the new tenth anniversary one. And here's the thing about the Lord of the Rings LCG. Uh, for me, right, getting into the hobby now. Uh, like Marvel champions, champions? and stuff yeah. like that, right? It's like, okay, there's the base box. This is a very good beginning point. The Lord of the Rings one has been out, well, for 10 years. Oh, yeah. There's so much stuff that has come out. Like, where do you start? How mm-hmm. do you catch up? Where do you I begin? I used to play it all the time. Uh, well, now, if you get this, you don't need it if you already have a bunch of the old stuff. But if you are looking to get in, this is your entry point. This is, it's updated art and, and, you know, and things like that. I don't know how much they've streamlined some of the rules and everything. Yeah, I'd be but, interested to see. But it's a pretty straightforward, like, reproduction of the original with some up, updated and upgraded things. Uh, so it, I, I thought it was really worth mentioning as this is a good foothold if you are interested in LCGs, right? Like uh, Fantasy Flight? Yeah, it is yeah. Fantasy Flight. Uh, so just something I thought was interesting and worth mentioning. There was a deck builder that I think looks really cool that is getting a re-release. Uh, so it's called Art Deco. Okay. It used to be called Promenade. Oh, but uh, Art Deco yeah. is a deck builder where you are um, buying and collecting <coughs> and selling art. I have and, played this game. And, and it looks really interesting. So you've got like all yeah. these, these what, like five different art styles, I think. And so you're 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 basically you're building it's sort of like set collection because you're building your deck 
trying to go around and buy these different styles of art, right? right? And then uh, cubist. Yeah, but I don't know a ton about it beyond that. But I thought it looked really interesting, and and would should I see it this time around in its lifetime? I'm definitely gonna try to make a point to play it because yeah. I imagine it's got really interesting art on the cards, and I yeah, like deck see. builders. Yeah. yeah, you know so. Anybody else got news? I got a few. Yeah, like, I, guess, I, guess, I had nothing that was worth mentioning. I sure. I, I uh, so uh, I mentioned last rundown. I believe it was maybe two ago, but I think it was last one. Uh, that Steamforged Games had announced a project they were working on. That I said this looked like their next project, and it was uh, Dark Souls uh, tabletop oh, yes. RPG. Yeah, was they were working on. Mm-hmm. So they just announced another project that they're working on. So now I don't know what their next one is. Well, Thanks for confusing me. Oh, <laughs> so do you know the uh, the interesting thing about the RPG? That they the Dark Souls one? Yeah. No, uh, well, well, well it's, maybe. It's what? basically based, they're going to use the D&D 5th edition rules. Oh, right. Oh, right. Huh. Um, so, uh, same thing with this one. Okay. Um, they are working on a RuneScape board game and tabletop RPG. Okay. How weird. That is so weird. This is like the 21st anniversary or something of it. So, RuneScape was like a... Old enough to drink. Old... Like an old, like Second Life RPG thing that people played, oh, and yeah, uh, making me feel old. like, yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, so there, it's going to be one to five players. Uh, the, and the uh, board game is going to come out to Kickstarter, while the RPG is just going to come straight to retail. They're both scheduled for 2022, and the RPG is compatible with 5e rulings. Oh, like right on. You said, yeah, like yeah, the Dark Souls yeah. thing. So, um. Uh, just weird. I was not expecting to see a RuneScape announcement, but that's mm, fine. Right. Um, it honestly turns me off a little bit to hear that Dark Souls is going to be using five E rules because I just don't think it fits. I, uh, but I just, we'll see. I, we'll see how they implement. I yeah. have no dog in that race. Mm-hmm. Um, but I when I saw that that was what they were going to be based on, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to bring that up. And and then you were starting to talk about it. I'm like, oh, is it going to talk <laughs> about how it's five E? Um, but yeah. So nope. Cool. 5e like every other version I haven't played 5e either. Played five I, I know, right? <laughs> but uh all right, what it's else been you guys? out for years. <laughs> uh so <laughs> 7 years, years ago, uh Titan Forge released a game called Lobotomy. Uh, I remember Lobotomy. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Never played, looked really interesting. Yeah, it looked really interesting. Um they're coming out with Lobotomy 2. Uh, oh. it's going to be on Electric Game Boogaloo? Found. Electric Boogaloo. No, it's not what it's called. <laughs> it's called Manhunt, uh, but it's not going to be till February, late in February. Oh, so, so now you've broken out of the asylum. Uh, I didn't read that quote. I don't. Know. <laughs> I'm making this up as I go. But yeah, uh, but no, it looks interesting. Though. Like it's the same kind of like minis and whatnot. Fully cooperative survival horror board game. Uh, tons of freebies with like exp- um like kind of like stretch goals and whatnot. That they'll mm-hmm. come out with like they did last time. Yeah, boy. Uh, but yeah, uh, upgradable weapons, cha- uh, challenging combat system, uh, monsters, and lots of patience and player characters to choose from. Sure. Right on. Right on. Fun. Checks out, son. Uh, there is. Jerry signed out, right? <laughs> uh, the uh, Invasion of the Brood by Peterson Games that's mm. starting to show up on uh, FLGS shelves now. Mm. Uh, that is a two-player game. That I it kind of makes me think of when we played that War of the Worlds. Oh yeah, deck builder mm-hmm. a little bit where so somebody is like the broodmaster and they're invading Earth, and then their other player plays the human players. Um. So I'm I'm interested. I'm hoping we get a copy of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I'm interested in seeing how that plays plays out. But again, worth mentioning. I tend to like Peterson game stuff. So yeah. just hey, check it out. Look it up. Uh, that's pretty much all I've got for news right now. Gonna mention a couple small things. I saw on Board Game Geek there was an announcement for Batman. Everybody lies. Um, so honestly, these were exciting me. <laughs> okay. These were exciting me for a long time, and now it's starting to flood the market, and I'm g- becoming less interested, which is, you know, that's on me, because if they're all good, no. So this is another game by Ignacy Trevishek in the detective system. Oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. so it's by Ignacy, and I don't know the other person's name. So it's going to play it's, like detective and doing house secrets. We're on Nika Spira. I'm sorry, I do not know how to say your name, but yes, it's going to play like the all the detectives mm-hmm. game, the Dune game, all those, mm-hmm. but it's Batman. Honestly, that sounds super cool but like man we've had like four of these come out in the last two years sure. like they've it's yeah. been like two years it's been insane i mean i think um, they found a model that 
Yeah, they did. And if they're selling, it's them, understandable. Right? I'm just saying yeah. for me, it was like, man, Detective looks amazing. And then the Vienna connection looks yep. amazing. And then the Dune one looks amazing. And they just keep coming out. And it's just like, okay, well, like. Slow it down. I, yeah, I just hope they all feel unique enough. And right. I just, I hope that I get to play them all, I guess. Because I right. can't buy all these. They're the same game. Right. Um, right. But these are also, uh, th- this is also scheduled for quarter two of 2022 currently. And then I'm just going to go through dis- uh, Discord for a second. Because people talk about our news section on Discord. So, uh. <laughs> Uh, yeah. oh. So just a couple things. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, second uh, remaster edition of Amun Ray is coming to Kickstarter soon. So that's something that people seem to be excited about in our Discord. If that's you, that's awesome. Uh, something that is not exciting to people. Gaijin. Oh yes. Uh, the next oh, yeah. game by Awaken Realms yes. has officially changed the name. Yes, they were right. I don't know this. if they picked which one yet, but they've officially changed they it. It was like down to two. It. Down to two. One of them was a lot higher than the other one, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. Was that like Outcast or something? No, no. Well, Outcast was, was one of them. But that was. Okay. The, the not as popular one. The other one yeah. is uh, the Japanese word for spirit. Yes. Okay, so um, the Japanese uh, word for outsider. Geiko Kujin. Geiko Kujin, it looks like, is the new one. Okay. So I guess it, the idea is keeping it more on in the Japanese theme. No, the more it's popular bec- choice it's, versus... Oh, sure. It's yeah. because Outcast is literally like the translation of Gaijin, I believe. Right. But the problem is that Gaijin is used as a derogatory, a derogatory outcast. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. White devil. Sure. White devil. That's how they know you. Right. Yeah. So so Ace Ventura. Uh, um, personally, I think they should have stuck with Gaijin. I agree. But uh, I get but it. I, I do get it. I also don't care. As long as the game's good, I don't care what it's yeah. called. Sure. I you know. I'm looking forward to it. It goes it goes back to what I was saying about uh Seppuku versus Hakakiri. Just Har- 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 Sorry, this is going off memory. Yeah. But uh, they uh, people were saying to switch it just because they were using the more offensive version of the word. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I understand. I do is understand. Is Harikuri more offensive? More offensive. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. So is that like a dishonorable suicide it, where no, 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 no. They're is both the same thing, but honorable suicide? Harikari is just uh, the bad way of saying it. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, say one is, it's because... Usually the way I say a word is the bad way of saying <laughs> it. <And then laughs> from what I understand as someone who is not educated on this topic at all, yeah, it, is that one is the honorable act of doing it and the other one is just the word of the motion of doing it oh, so okay. so okay. if you're just talking so you're about doing it without yeah you're not instead acknowledging of saying, the honor so of the it. idea right. behind it is instead of saying honorable sacrifice you're saying stabbing yourself is like basically the, right. the difference right like oh they um, killed themselves they blew their brains out right yeah. right um and then uh the last thing that people seem to be talking about here is it looks like unsettled is coming back to kickstarter or something yeah. i see people talk about this so unsettled is coming back to kickstarter which was a game that uh Really, uh, February 2022, Unsettled is coming, and that's a game Very that looks soon. incredible to me. That's made by the uh, Vindication. Oh, yeah. Orange Nebula. Yeah, uh, Orange, yeah, Orange Nebula. Nebula. It's, yeah, it's yeah. their space-themed uh, campaign-y looking game, it feels like, where you're playing through, like, maybe, uh, not campaigns, but... Um, what are the skur skur scam yeah. skirmishes? Yeah, scenarios. Like, scenarios. See, scenarios. Um, sc- scenarios. scenarios. I was thinking All skirmishes, but I knew that wasn't right. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, that's some of the stuff you guys have been talking about on Discord. So I just wanted to cover some of that because if that's what interests you, then I want to cover it on the show. You know. I guess the only other thing news-wise I will say is the Mountains Out of Molehills game that mm-hmm. we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, that is coming to retail at the end of February. So in the last. I forget the exact date, but that hit streets in like one of the last two weeks of February. Straight to the streets. So uh, you can check out a review, but I could say, I mean, we all enjoyed it. Yeah. But if, yeah, for, for more in-depth, definitely go check out the review. Uh, you know what? I'm going to mention something, actually, because he mentioned it in our public chat, so I assume he's okay with it. Alex Inouye. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely worth bringing up. Yeah, Alex Inouye, who designed... Um, he's one of the uh, developers for Runes sh- of Zone. Sure, sure, he did the uh, background story stuff. Uh, he's like yes. a writer for yeah. it and everything. And he oh, helped God. with Nersha. Nersha. Nersha as well, yes. Um, so he is talking on our Discord, so look into our Discord uh, in the description if this interests you, but he is actually uh, looking to playtest a alpha g- card game that he has in development right now. Mm-hmm. He's looking for playtesters to come on table Top simulator and try it out for him. Uh, he says it's like a smash up TCG. Um, he says comparable to maybe Card Fight Vanguard, which I do not know. Um, uh, there are four actions. Uh, you have a deck of 40 cards that you build a 30 card deck out of. Um, uh, they're uh, testing hybrid decks of 15 15. Uh, and yeah, it's just a, um, like, like he said, a TCG deck builder smash up itch game he wants you guys to test out with him. So yeah, right on. Uh, cool. join our Discord if that interests you because it is right there in our chat. Get your link right there. All right, any other news? Nope. No, I think we're good. All right, let's jump over to crowdfunding. I have one. Yeah, I guess so I've I'll got two. It. I have two, but one is tiny. Well, then I'll do mine. Um, Ostia. 
It's a game uh, it's coming out from uh, Uchi Bakoya. Uh, I don't know the name of the company. They're a Japanese company. Sure. Um, Ostia is the name of one of the ports in Rome. Um, it's a one to four player game. I think it's two to four, and I think with one of the expansions, it becomes one to four. Uh, it says it takes about two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Trajan and Moncala inspired. Okay. So you have one board that has your ship and you're going around the place trading and stuff. But then you have another board. Each person has a board mm-hmm. that you have a lot of little ships. Those are called player boards. Yes, you player should know board. That term. Yeah, I should know you're, that. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so everyone on their little player board has uh, it's a circle um, divided up, and and you move your ships like in Moncala. You pick them up and you place one down each time. Oh yeah. And so you're getting different amount of resources depending on how many ships you have placed in that area. Got it. So the the different resources are the, the different circle resources or are whatever. Circle, okay. Yeah. Uh, it looked pretty pretty interesting. Um, it was uh, six or three dollars for the base game, so it's not a you know bank breaking. Yeah. Ninety eight with all of the expansions and all the fiddly bits. Uh, actually, I think it comes with nice wooden tokens and stuff. Sure. Um, and it it's up to till February twentieth. All right. Yeah. There's some time. Yeah. For some time. Excellent. Uh, I'll go real quick with my first one. Uh, Monsters and the Things That Destroy Them. So this is a new game from Joey Vigor. We do have a preview video of that up. Mm-hmm. Um, and it should already be up at the time that this comes out. Does that work? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, anyways, so it, we got basically the, um, the double pack, right? So it comes with, with two 21-card decks. Uh, you've got uh, the deck is basically divided between monsters, which number from one to twelve, and tactical cards. And the tactical cards are gonna uh, there's nine of those, and they negate they can they can negate certain monsters. They can uh, give you different abilities, and you're basically you you got it's it's similar to love letter as in like you're looking at your card, you're looking at the cards that can be drafted. And, but you've got to you're kind of trying to remember what you think you've seen people take right, and. Um, so yeah, you're you are uh, you're picking up cards. They may trigger effects. They can. They has like a nice little cascading thing where like you can have different. Dan was like bouncing off a couple of combos and <laughs> cackling yeah, the yeah, whole time. Yeah. It was pure fun. It was pretty fun. I don't think it actually had anything to do with me winning, <laughs> but no, it was pure I mean, fun. But that, <laughs> you took everybody's <laughs> discard pile and put it all into yours. <laughs> uh, who cares? He had, he had fun. Uh, but anyways, it, we legit had a really good time goofing around with it yeah. and, and playing with it. It's nothing like super heavy, but there is strategy there. Uh, and there is a lot of gaming the gamers uh, there. I, that's kind of been a theme like on a bunch of videos we've been talking about lately. Yep. But uh, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, so that is on Kickstarter. It is uh, it's basically fifteen dollars gets you uh, the base game, which is the dark, which is the the movie monsters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Twenty five dollars gets you the double pack. So that's movie monsters, and then that's like the sea monsters. Yeah, the um, deep, the deep. Um, so that's two decks, right? And and they play different enough. Uh, I would say that in our and we talked about this in the video on uh, the deep actually has I think a little bit crunchier strategy, yeah. uh, a lot more a little more, more finagling that, like combo together. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, so for thirty five dollars you can get you get the big box. Um, so basically you get the deep, uh, you get the dark. Uh, there is a digital print and play version. You will get of the third cycle called The Dead. It is uh, 80s I, slasher movies. I was going to oh, guess nice. Dangerous. Nope, not The Dangerous. Because uh, Deep and Dark and Dangerous is the ocean from Land Before Time. Oh, okay. Nope, <laughs> it is not the ocean from Land Before Time. <laughs> but I believe this, Dan, this means that there'll be like a Michael Myers card. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And I know that yeah. because I saw an image. Well, that is very interesting. That's pretty cool. I cannot argue this. That's pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. I, wonder, um, I want to know where they're going to rank them all. So the big box does fit sleeve cards as well. And then there's a limited edition for $45, which gets you like a signed, it gets you all the other things and then like a signed and numbered deluxe box. Anyways, uh, relatively cheap game. I think there's a lot of replayability and it's very accessible for new and young gamers as well. Um, I had a good time playing it. You can watch the review uh, for more information there. All right. You only have one. Uh, I, I have two technical okay, ones. Okay, you, you, you can go. Uh, so our friends from Phalanx Games, right? They did yeah. some of the games that we really enjoy. Yep. Ooh, boot. Ooh, yes, that. Um, Purple Haze. 
Uh, I've been seeing this. I haven't looked at it. Yeah. So it looks pretty interesting. So it's a uh, a tactical combat, story creation, campaign mode. Uh, it's one to four players. You're dropped into Vietnam during the Vietnam War, and like you have to make like tough decisions, and the decisions you make will affect your next uh, <laughs> strategies and stuff and whatnot. It's on Game Found, not Kickstarter, so make sure you look there. Right. Uh, look at the right it. spot. Look at the right spot. Uh, but yeah, so lead a squad of Marines on a series of nerve shattering missions, face consequences and gut twisting decisions, uh, fun- fight the unrelenting Viet Cong guerrillas, and truly feel the burdens of command. Uh, immersive story creation game for one to four players, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, Dan's looking it up right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like a, like a, kind of like a standard, like you know, um, you have your guys, you get your loadouts. Uh, here's your mission. Go to your mission, but then there's going to be decisions you're going to have to make. You have to leave somebody behind, or do you, you know? Honestly, the picture of just the board with like the player boards next to it mm-hmm. looks Robinson Crusoe to me. Does it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's exciting to me. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, safe as uh, Dan oh, right. would like as, to say. As he likes to say, that's right. And there's still about two weeks left on it, so you got some time. Um, so there's a game I'm going to talk about while Dan's like looking at, at stuff. Perfect. Yeah. Um, there's a game we're going to get a copy of this to play. I'm hoping we get a video of, up of it before uh, it is for the Kickstarter's over. Mm-hmm. Um, but a game called Bat Flip. So bat flip is it's a baseball game. Okay. But you are uh, you basically you're taking like two teams and you shuffle them together like smash up style. Okay. And then that gives you like so you've got like and it's a two player game so you're going head to head against somebody else. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I haven't played it yet. I've heard about it. I watched a video a board game mechanics uh, video about it. Mm-hmm. Looks like a lot of fun. Again, we're getting a copy sent. I'm hoping we can get it played and reviewed in time. Um, but the the one of the nice things they do in their uh, in their pledge levels. And I think this is awesome. Uh, so 29 bucks gets you a copy of the game. Uh, $45 gets you bat flip and then a four team expansion. Um, so you four more teams, mm-hmm. blah, 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 $79 buy one, donate one. So huh. you, you, you get the bat flip in the expansion for yourself and they will donate a copy of the base game to boys and girls club of America. Okay. So, I cool. just like, yeah, hey, cool. we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna, you, you get this, mm-hmm. we're gonna, we're gonna donate a copy. So fourteen people have backed it that nice. way. So fourteen copies. Got I love on, it. On a similar note, that previous game I just mentioned, the Purple Haze, uh, mm-hmm. some of the money from that goes to a Vietnam veteran. Fantastic. Fund. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, I just, I love it when, especially, they give back a little bit. especially like small independent people, right? right. And they, they don't really have yeah, a means. Phalanx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, like, Phalanx is bigger, but they're not <laughs> as huge. Right. They're not as huge, right? Yeah. But when you get when you right right, when you get when you get like the smaller companies and they they're still willing to give back willing to give back I think that's fantastic I know under I do not expect any and everybody to do this but it is a very nice surprise when people do and I just think that's great Mm -hmm. Um, if I had more time like I I have uh, relatives and friends that are like teachers and I've always thought like how awesome would it be to be able to get with them and go hey can we start a board game club like at your school school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you know but like. I right now can't commit to the time that it sure. would take to like get Do it going. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, so when I see things like this, I get excited. I think it's really nice. Uh, and it's just a good way to kind of give back to the community. So, yeah, no, that's cool. I'm looking forward to putting like the bears and the Tottenham Hotspurs together. And there you go. Try Bad news out. bears. Are you who you got a you got a Kickstarter before we're done? Yeah, I haven't mentioned either of mine yet. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> All right, so, uh, <laughs> so my first one is small, but I just I love these guys. Their products are fantastic. Board game tables is live right now with their board game bags again. Oh, okay. um, bags so if, if you're looking for a board game bag, their bags are fantastic. I have their big bag, um, and these are their like new edition big bags, you know, mm-hmm. like their back one was really awesome. I have one. I did have a strap break, but I don't think that was the quality of the bag. I think that's because I put 500 pounds of games in my bag. Uh, um, same. Yeah. But uh, but so board game uh, bags and play mats for board games from boardgametables.com. This runs till February 10th. Um, their premium bags are 12 by 12 by 20. Uh, and run for $59. There are seven colors to choose from. They support up to 65 pounds. Uh, they come with four ways to carry. Like It has like the thing you pull out so that you can roll it. It has like the shoulder thing. It has like a backpack thing. It has all these different ways to carry it. Uh, and it can hold, they say, approximately seven ticket-to-ride size boxes, seven uh, above, Standard. you know, average. Yeah, yeah, like they're they're like slightly exactly. bigger than, yeah. Maybe a little taller, but yeah. yes. Um, so I'm telling you, these premium bags are fantastic, guys. I, I cannot support them more enough on these. Um, they also they make have... make some fun games. 
They, they do, uh, yeah. too. Uh, they also have the lightweight bags available. They come in four colors, hold up to 20 pounds. They hold four Ticket to Ride boxes. They're 12 by 12 by 12, and they are $7. These are supposed to feel like... $7. Uh, yeah, they're supposed to feel... They had a, a comparison there that they kind of feel like, um, like an Ikea bag, but it's like built better and designed for board games, right? Cool. Um, and then they also, on this Kickstarter, have heavy-duty play mats, which I don't have any of their play mats yet, but it, we've seen their bags and their games and their, like, uh, tables, right? Mm-hmm. They're all fantastic, so I have no doubt these play mats are great. They go from $59, $69, $79, depending on the size you want, from 2 and a half by 4 to 3 by 5 by 3 and a half by 5 and a half. Uh, they come in a carrying case that is made specifically for the mat that you got. Uh, they are the five millimeter thick mouse pad ones, and they come in five different colors. That is the uh, small Kickstarter I wanted to mention. I'm telling you guys, if you guys need nice play mats or nice bags, these guys know what they're doing. Yeah, this this and company's fantastic. They're pretty cool people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you forgot to mention this small Kickstarter uh-huh. that's at $5.3 million. <laughs> oh, God. It's Marvel Zombies. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. I just want to mention it was So Marvel Zombies million. is live, but okay, uh, yeah. you all it's know It's almost that. done. It's almost <laughs> done. I actually didn't do that one. because uh, So I'm going to talk about this time. one. I don't know too much about it, but I said last vi- episode that I was going to talk about it. So Collab by Portal Dragon is on there. You have till February 8th. I'm going to look at this camera that I never look at. Hi. Uh, you have to February 8th. It's a one to four player game that plays in 90 to 120 minutes and ranges from 45 to a hundred dollars. I should point out that the more expensive tiers in this also come with like other card games they have designed or something like that. Yeah. Um, but in the game, you are sending out your little minions to gather resources. Um, and you have scientists that you use to build up a dice pool and build up cards. It is a tableau building game with a dice pool system. Um, the board looks awesome. The deluxe edition the like it's somewhere between 45 and 100 is probably around like the 75 80 dollar mark probably for a deluxe edition um but uh like there's like these like cauldron things that hold your dice that are your minions that you're moving around the board and it all just looks <laughs> fantastic um so yeah uh you are building up a tableau of cards that all kind of engine build proc off each other uh once someone builds the 12th card it ends which is very similar yeah, to uh san juan yeah. right um, and you are gaining renown points throughout the game, um, and whoever has the most renown points at the end of the game wins. But at the end of the day, you're all scientists in a lab trying to build up your lab and, and have experiments and stuff like that. I just think the art looks really cool, and the theme is cool. I honestly have not watched a gameplay of it yet, so I don't know if I myself would even like it. But as far as pictures and idea goes, it looks really cool. Fantastic. Well, I got one more to talk about. That's the one I was going to talk about. Are you going to talk about that one? For real? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, the value on yeah. this one. Go for it, Bobby. Uh, yeah, so Tim mentioned uh, earlier uh, Crokinole, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a big game. There's a lot of conventions for uh, – they have tournaments and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even the small, like, IndyCon yeah. like, tournament. Mm-hmm. They do uh, a big tournament. And some people have them, and they're hard to transport because they're big and huge. Well, there's a, a company uh, out there. Uh, I guess it doesn't list the company. It just says by Seth Hyatt. It doesn't say what his company is. I guess he's is. the company. He must be the company. All right, Table, Seth? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, so this is their eighth edition of their Crokinole boards. They have different types. They've got rosewood and mahogany, and they're also offering like uh, carrying cases. So if you already have a board, you can just order a case so that you can take your board places because it's it's oh, it's big. It's it a big fold, awkward yeah board. You know, I've yeah. never played Crokinole. <laughs> and yeah. my sister, when I went over to my sister's, uh-huh. like her boyfriend was disappointed that I didn't bring Crokinole yeah. because he heard her talk about it. Was like, I oh. want to play that. Yeah, and I'm and my sister Megan's like. The board is like <laughs> this big, like yeah. you know, it's, it's awkward. It's not easy to yeah. ge- like you know it transport. Just, it doesn't fold up like other boards. Do. Right, 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 yeah. right. So yeah, but, but yeah, you can get on there and like so for forty bucks you can get a case if you've got one already. I love the pricing on this stuff. Yeah, a uh, hundred bucks you get to choose uh, a, a wood type and, and yeah, get it's one like made. rosewood or mahogany. Yep, and then you can pay hundred and forty dollars to get uh, a, your your board and, and the, the case. case. Boom. Which yeah. I think is... And a case. Damn it. And a case. <laughs> Fix that in editing. <laughs> which, yeah. which is a really good deal. It uh, is. And it's not just a board. You do, you get two sets of the tokens, right? Correct. And, you get and all the stuff you need to play. And a nice little box. That and like the, the tokens. And the scoring and the, and the pegs. Yep. To... Scoring pegs. Mm-hmm. So like my Kroganol board, like my father-in-law made for me. Mm-hmm. And so I just had... Like it... It's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but it's 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 nice. It's functional. Uh, I've like been drooling over these and thinking like, yeah. ooh... Could I justify one? And then if I get it, well, I should probably get the carrying case, right? So I can move my board around. Right, right. Uh, but the boards look fantastic. If, if you like dexterity games, I mean, Crokinole is straight up mm-hmm. dexterity. There's no theme. 
It is. You can. They give you the set to basically play a two player game, but we have played four player Crokinole. Mm -hmm. You know, just have a good time. It comes but, with little like acrylic holders to put your pieces in. Yeah. yeah. It's just really nice. It's a game. And it's, it's nice board. And, it, and it's a good price because you can get online, and I'm telling you, you can spend three to five hundred dollars mm -hmm. on like really fancy crokinole boards and don't get me wrong they look amazing mm -hmm. but these look really good for a hundred bucks because mm -hmm. you could go on mayday's website and find crokinole boards for a hundred bucks they're not this nice yeah um so i also haven't played crokinole but just i don't have a whole bunch of interest it's like i'd play it to yeah. just you Dexterity know it's, game, yeah, like it's flipping, fine yeah it's like flick them up i was a gonna say, bit. isn't it literally just the game you play where you push the thing with no. the stick and then it goes into the... No, that's a shuffleboard type of Yeah, shuff like it's doesn't not, it play like this, shuffleboard? I'm this saying? is it's similarly because you're moving a token and trying to right, get it to stop. Right, you're flicking and a corner, area. you're getting it to stop and you're knocking sure. other people's things out. Yes. Of it. so, it's not in a straight line, it's round. And it's, <laughs> well, it's also difficult though because okay. after the first piece is on the board, you're, the next person who goes, their piece has to touch another piece. Oh, so they have to touch the first piece. No, any piece. You just right, have to make piece. sure it touches a piece. Right, but the second turn, there's only one piece on the board. First right. turn, there's only one piece on the board. So like the first one goes out there. Then, wherever my... Say I go first. Mm -hmm. Wherever my piece is on the board, now for your piece to stay on the board, you need to make contact with my piece. That's what I just said. Because the first person, there's no piece on the board, right? right? So they go wherever. The second person... There's only one piece. They yep. have to hit the first piece. Yep. Yeah, okay. And then yeah, put it way out here on the edge and make them come out there and hit Oh, the yeah. Uh, okay. you, there's all kinds of strategy and, and stuff you okay. can do with it. It's really, it's, it's, if Plus you like that kind of game, it's a lot of fun. around the, like, the center yeah. bit, so yeah. it's harder to get into this right. in the middle. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. I like Crokinole. I didn't know you like Crokinole as much. Yeah, I mean, I've only played it a couple I just, times. I'm not like a maniac for it, but I just yeah, sit down and exactly. play, right? Yeah, yeah. Good I just feel like it's a $10 game that they purposely make out of really expensive wood so they can charge $150 for it. I mean, that's all I'm saying. Sure. Get a piece of cardboard. <laughs> just go buy yourself a table and drill a hole in the middle of it, you know, and then just start flicking pieces of right. wood toward it. <laughs> right. Boom. Done. That's all I'm saying. Oh, nailed it. Anyways, production value <laughs> and quality. Yeah, really is for the case too. Really nice. some, even people yeah. we talk to who have them, they're like, "Well, I have my board, but it's at home." Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. How do I move it? Right. Yeah. But like this. That's uh, that's all my. That's all my stuff. Kickstarter stuff. So I keep sure stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you just, yeah. uh, keep saying stuff after you. I keep jumping back in time to say stuff at the yeah, same time. Yeah. I'll get the case. <laughs> All right, guys. So that, <laughs> yep. that is going to be it for the show. <laughs> so uh, be sure to check out our friends at the Board Game Mechanics. Jason and Katie do a pretty okay job. Okay. They got a weekly podcast, and uh, they're all they're cranking out review videos all the time. They cover a lot of stuff we don't. Yep. I uh, probably intentionally. Yeah. I take it personally. <laughs> yeah. They're also big fans. Fact, they would say they outside. they would say they cover good stuff, right? They would, but they're <laughs> yeah. wrong. Uh, right. They don't cover games in space, mm. right? Or with miniatures. Yeah. Well, miniatures. sometimes Jason accidentally covers a game with miniatures. Right. Right. Accidentally, uh, but no, they're they've been good to us, and uh, so yeah, go check them out again. You, you're not going to see a ton of overlap all the time, right? They cover a whole bunch of different different stuff. Yep. Different styles. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Also, check out all the other rundown shows on Game Talk Network. There's yes. Magic the Gathering rundown. There is Miniatures rundown. There is Pokemon rundown. There might be a Yu-Gi-Oh rundown. We're talking about it, maybe. Uh, Who knows? Might as well just keep growing the brand and see what works, right? Yeah, throw a bunch throw of spaghetti the wall, against the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> exactly. See what we said. Yeah, I think there's a new board game right Fix there. Fix it post. <laughs> 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 we want to all be in sync the entire, the entire episode. Time. I mean, hell. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, that's all I got. So for the board game rundown, I've been Tim. I've been Bob. I've been Spencer. Dan. We'll see you next time. <laughs> we got that one. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Thanks for checking out the board game rundown. If you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Share our videos on social media and spread the word. We publish new content weekly, including reviews, unboxing, and let's plays. And as always, thanks for watching.